practice of being a stay-at-home mom, uh, a mompreneur working at home, right? So I, I block time for them as well. And usually that's in the afternoons. We can go to the park in the morning when they first wake up. Uh, so we make breakfast for them and little breaks. So whenever I have like a little break or a phone call finishes early, I'll come out of my office. And when I come out of my office, they know, yay, mommy's done, let's play. Whether it's like five minutes of tickle me or like a quick puzzle or something like that. So making time for them, they know that, hey, mom has time for me and mom has time for work. And you have to be consistent with that. Whenever you establish a boundary, you have to be consistent with that because otherwise the boundary doesn't stay. And as for boundaries with uh, particular clients, like for me, I just learned over time that I work really well with other single parents and other moms as well too. And the reason for that is because we just understand each other. We Hi, and welcome to the Cheap Mama Life podcast. I am your host, Brenda Kilhoffer, and I'm your Cheap Mama. Anyway, today I am excited. I have a guest. I'm really excited for all of you to hear her story, especially it's so timely right now. My guest today is Cheryl Ann Chow. She is a mompreneur. She's got her uh, many different hats on, several different businesses going. And uh, in Cheryl's case, it was really, she had, uh, she was at a regular full-time corporate America job when COVID-19 hit and she had to make some changes. And I think, uh, you know, she, in, in Cheryl's case, she was forced, but I'm going to anyway, let Cheryl introduce herself and tell that story. Um, but she's so inspiring to me because um, oftentimes we don't make that choice. And that's a big leap of faith going to become a mompreneur, an entrepreneur as a single mom of, you have two kids, correct, Cheryl? Yes, two, two kids. children. All right. So I'm going to let Cheryl and Cheryl Ann introduce herself. Yes. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Brenda, for having me. I appreciate it. So yes, my name is Cheryl and Chow, and I am a single mom of two. My kids are three and four. I became a single mom back in 2017, and my ex-husband is not physically here, so he also does not support us financially, and I had to be the sole provider for my kids. I have to say that in the beginning, it was definitely hard. I did work my usual nine to five at that time in 2017, but I did pick up a uh, side business to supplement our my income because as you know child care is very expensive so that's where the books came into play and then uh, yes COVID-19 hit and our office got shut down because of that and because everyone was on lockdown we were not able to transfer to other locations in other parts of the world so I had to pivot my career and and look for something else and it was just a time where everyone was in the same boat so everyone you know you, you had one position available and a hundred applicants so it was definitely a very challenging time and I pivoted and became a full-time entrepreneur because I had my little foot in the door as a entrepreneur on the side you know a, a part-time job weekends and nights uh, with my books and so I just picked it up full-time with um, two other industries and that's what I did. Awesome. So how do you, what would you, what would you tell other moms out there who may, maybe it isn't a COVID situation, but maybe they just always wanted to be a mompreneur um, or they want to be able to be at home as a stay at mom, but they are, they're like you, they're a single mom. they feel as though perhaps they have to have that guaranteed paycheck, that guaranteed salary. And there's some fear holding them back from jumping into maybe doing something that they really have always wanted to do uh, for themselves and own a business. What, what advice do you have for somebody in that, that position? That's a great question, Brenda. So your why has to be your strongest point for why you want to do anything. And I believe that if your why is bigger than anything else that's out there, it will, you will overcome your fear. And my why was keeping my kids. I didn't want to lose my kids in the divorce battle, that I couldn't have the full custody of them, that I wouldn't be able to see them because my ex-husband has no intention of living here. So I didn't want this international custody. What a nightmare that would have been. And so I knew I had to make this work for my kids. Anything that I do, it would be because I wanted to be there for them and um, be able to spend the time with them. Because, you know, when I was working in the corporate job, I left my kids in daycare. Daycare took care of them because I can't bring them to work. 
and they would be there from eight in the morning until I picked them up at six at night and spend a couple hours with them, have dinner, and then go to bed again. So my time with them was very limited. And I knew that I want, if I could do anything in the world, and so I'm also a prayer warrior. And I had prayed as like, God, if I could do anything in the world, I really just want to be at home with my kids. But I know I have to work. So what can I do to make it work? What can I do to have this dream of mine come true so I could be with my kids and still provide for them? And God just opened doors for me. You know, um, I found out about the books. And I could be a consultant at home to sell my books, to supplement my income. So that was my first step into it. So what I would advise a mom who's maybe has a little bit of that fear and wants that steady paycheck, don't quit your nine to five yet. Find your passion, find what it is that drives you, what it is that you love. And for me, my love was in books. I grew up with books. Every time I won a reward and I was able to pick a prize, I would always pick a book. And so that was my passion. That was my love of something to do that I could make money with and I wanted to share books with my kids as well too I wanted them to love it so go with that start it part-time build it up slowly businesses don't happen overnight but keep going don't stop because eventually people will start noticing when you become consistent in what you do people will notice you people will start to pay attention they'll ask you questions and then you can start talking to them and telling them about what you do and eventually then you can transition into becoming a full-time mompreneur. But don't quit that nine to five yet until you have that solid foundation. It's not something that I would want for anyone because as an entrepreneur, your paycheck is definitely not steady. So you do have to know that, hey, I'm ready to step out of this nine to five corporate job and I know I can make it on my own. You shared so many things that one, I, I completely relate. I love that your decision for you started with prayer. I, I remember when I first made the decision, uh, to go into real estate, which was, um, you know, a self-employed entrepreneur type job. I, I remember as I made that decision for me, it was, um, it was a prayer one afternoon that, uh, I had an opportunity at work. Now for me, uh, I was able to get a severance pay. So they, and they had said, Hey, who wants to leave? I didn't have the, uh, you're done. There's no, we, there was a gathering with the other managers and my boss said, Hey, I, you know, I don't want to let any of you go. You guys are at the level you're at because you're the top performers. And I, we're, I, I get to, I, I have to, we've got one where we're downsizing to three instead of four. So if one of you would like to, Uh, what, uh, let me know by Monday. And I remember getting in the car and I was praying and it was a time for me. It was, I had, um, I, it was during Lent and I had made the decision that I, instead of, um, instead of being on the phone or listening to my normal radio stations during that time that I was going to listen to, um, uplifting Christian music or prayers. Um, and I just remember being in the car and saying, God, what can I do? What can I do that I can replace this income? And, you know, he answered, it was real estate. And then, you know, of course, you know, it's like that story with the, you know, bring me a lifeboat and you're standing on the roof and all these things come to rescue and say, no, God's taking care of me. You know, I was like, okay. So, you know, I had my answer and yet I, I had to go verify. I had to keep questioning. Um, and he kept answering. I went to somebody that had left our industry and was in real estate and said, can I make as much money? And he says, yeah, he said, absolutely go pray on it. And then I had talked to somebody else and I, that was doing it. And she said the same thing. Yep. Just pray on it. And then I was introduced to to a company that their whole philosophy was God family business. So I love that for you, that decision and, you know, just asking, you know, God, show me the way what, you know, this is what I want. This is what I desire. Show me the way. And that that was answered. Um, now you said that you don't recommend now for me, I received a severance pay. So I, you know, I had that security blanket, right. I knew that I had, um, eight months 
of continued pay to get my business up and going. And I felt confident that I can, do, that I could do that. Um, so, and you were thrown into it. You were, you, you had your security blanket in your business having already been started. How, what would you, um, businesses during, um, while I was still working, working my corporate job. So building up slowly, I built my following. Um, I think that's probably the biggest challenge is to build your following. How are you going to stand out amongst the other people that are in the same industry as you, even if it's in, as an entrepreneur, as a mompreneur, you know, there's lots of people in like health and wellness. There's lots of people in um, like financial advising. So there's a lot of different titles out there that are entrepreneurship, but you see many people that's in them. So how do you differentiate yourself? You've got to build that following. And sometimes that takes time. Um, I was still working in my, in my corporate job. And I, 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 like you, I also had a severance because I didn't choose to leave the company, shut our office down. So they paid everybody that they let go of severance. And so we were able to survive off of that as well. But you hear stories though of some small businesses not being able to make it to the end because of one thing or another. Um, and so the, sometimes that is a real fear and that is a real thing that could happen which is why I say, you know, you still want to make sure that you are confident that this is going to take off. And this is the one of the ways that you can do that, though, is by having a business coach. So that's what I did. I, I hired a business coach. I invested in myself and I hired a business coach to help me to make sure that I had all my plans in place so that I could make sure that what I was doing would be a success. Awesome. Now, would you suggest that maybe for someone who is starting a small based business and they're not, you know, they're not thrown into the position that we were that, okay, it's a, you've got this weekend to make the choice or you don't have a choice. Would you suggest that anybody who maybe has that dream or that desire to work from home rather than be in an office or a nine to five environment that they establish a, um, maybe a long-term savings that they have as a backup as they're building that business and um, before they leave whatever they're normally doing? Yeah, so I've, several families give it, because you know that that's how much you have in savings that you can survive off of before you really become um, in a pinch. And so, yes, um, my sister, for example, she said, hey, why don't you give it a second see if this is working out? And if it's not working out, then maybe you need to, the situation is different. And while some, while some um, industry perseverance that I could pull it through and this is something that I know I wanted for myself I really wanted to be at home with my kids and be able to take care of them I don't have other family members here uh, my mom my brother and my sister the question hey why didn't you go back to California at the time it really wasn't an option well my flights were canceled twice and driving that 24 hours nonstop to, to California by myself would have been very challenging. And the cost of living in California is also exceptionally high as a single parent. Um, it, 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 just, it just didn't make sense logically for me to, to travel back, back there. So I stayed where I was, which is in Oklahoma. And I just, I just made it work. I found support here. I found other mompreneurs here that enjoyed doing what they were doing as well too. And we found ways to make it work. You know, we took turns helping each other out with the kids, you know, watch each other's booths if we needed to, you know, take care of her. We made it work or I made, and I made it work here in Oklahoma. And so I, I feel that this is something that 
each individual needs to look at by themselves. They need to look at them internally. You know, like you said, they need to see, do they have that savings account? Do they have that support? Do they have all the little things that matter in life that they can support themselves while pursuing this entrepreneurship? So, so tell me, what were some of the things as you got started that um, you had to overcome? What were some big milestones or some accomplishments that you had right off the bat that, you know, energized you that maybe caused, you know, some experiences that maybe did cause some doubt and fear. And yet you're, you're super encouraged. You're super proud of yourself for having overcome them. So in the beginning when I talked to my mom about this opportunity to have a site business that would be my own and that I would need to work it. You know, at first I thought my mom's reaction would be, no, don't do it. It's too risky. Um, you're not guaranteed that you're going to be making money. But instead she said this, she said, yeah, there's no harm in doing it. And when I think back and I look into why she had said that, believe it's because she wanted to well one instill that confidence in me that if I believe in something and I'm really passionate about something then I can do it and two to to also help me tax wise so the other great benefit about being an entrepreneur is that there are a lot of tax write-offs that you you get as an entrepreneur that you don't get when you are working full-time as, a, as in, in corporate America. So there's a lot more um, forgiveness, um, put money back in your pocket. And so, so at the time working for it and doing my own business was also going to be mutually beneficial for me as well. And one of the things that I had to overcome was my fear of talking too much to people. Um, one of the things that I learned in network marketing is that you have to talk to a lot of people, you have to share a lot, but you have to do it right. Um, if you go in first with the idea of selling, then people are just not gonna want that. I, I had heard about it and I knew about it. And especially in the corporate job, there was the sales department and I never liked our sales department because they would make promises that I knew um, were difficult to keep, difficult to meet. And I, I didn't wanna be like that. So for me, it was learning about how to do all of that and overcoming fear of scaring people off. And so I realized that, hey, you know, if I, I just become genuine, if I just share, this is what I do, this is how it's impacted me, this is how it's positively impacting my kids, learning their uh, letters, numbers, recognition, penmanship, all those good things. I said, um, then, you know, people are going to see my story and they're going to want to know, hey, I want that for my kids too. How did you do that? Um, so that, that was what was going through my head and how I, I had to overcome those fears of mine. Isn't it so funny how, um, I think getting into when, when we start the entrepreneurial journey, I don't think I've ever met anybody that was, well, I'm not a salesman. I don't want to be a salesman. Um, and at the end of the day, in all things, we truly, um, have an opportunity to sell ourselves and it's our experiences, who we are and how we help others solve their problems and what we bring to the table that we're selling, not necessarily the product. I mean, certainly it helps to, um, certainly it helps to be in love with the product that you're selling. And ultimately I think I, like you started with it, it, boils down to your big why, right? And helping other people achieve their why. So did yes, you- absolutely, absolutely. I think that- Yeah, so I think that um, being an, an entrepreneur definitely gave me a new and different perspective on sales, that it's not- about the product or about the services. It's really about who you are and your brand and your message. So it's, it was a totally different approach than experience, you know, in corporate, in the corporate world and that sale, that type of sales position. Absolutely. So you mentioned that your mom was super supportive and 
when when you began your uh, business in in the network marketing career field? What um, did you come across people that maybe weren't so supportive, and how did you handle how did you handle those objections? Yes, I did. It, it didn't, it wasn't apparent though until later on because, you know, most people, when you tell them, hey, you know, I have this new great idea, I think it's going to be great. People want to be supportive of you. They don't, they don't want to start off with something negative saying, oh, you're not going to make it. That's not a good fit for you, stuff like that. But down the line, you know, maybe in the back of their mind or maybe uh, subconsciously they're thinking, oh, I want to check in on her to see if, if she can really do it, if she can really be her own boss. And so they'll check in on you and they'll ask you, Hey, you know, how are you doing? And I'm an honest person and I'm going to be honest now too. I struggled. I struggled my first 18 months in the book, in the book business. It was not easy. I had to really grow as a person and, and learn what worked and what didn't work. And so a lot of people were like, well, why are you still doing this? You're not making money. You're losing money. You should, you should quit. Well, I didn't want to quit because I loved the books. I love the quality. I love the content. I love sharing. I love sharing and I love going to events, sharing a book with a reader who might have been, you know, the parents will later on tell me he was such a reluctant reader, but you showed him a book that he really liked. And I think that this is going to help him with his reading abilities, you know, seeing those kids with their smiles from ear to ear and hearing those parents say, wow, what an impact that this has made to my child, you know, really brightens my day and makes me really glad that I'm doing what I'm doing. And that's why I don't stop. Um, you're going to meet people in life that, that might say those things to you. And sometimes it may be because they're trying to look out for your best interest and they, they, they think what is right for you. But ultimately, I believe that it's what's in your heart and what you really want for yourself. And that's so if you really want that, if you really want to be that entrepreneur and make it work, you will find a way to make it work and nobody's going to hold you back. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I think so often, um, especially in this instant gratification world, people expect that, you know, we're going to go into business and it's just going to work and it's going to be an instant success. And I love that you shared that you had to work on yourself, right? It wasn't that, um, it wasn't about the system or the books. I, I feel like anybody, you know, it's, you know, certainly there's bad, there, there are business systems that maybe might be better. Some might be better than others. And at the end of the day, if it's, if it's a system that is duplicatable, that you're passionate about, and things aren't necessarily going the way you want them to. I love that you said you got to work on yourself because we, we can't take our old habits and patterns. You know, we, we start, right. We, we're, we're used to a, you know, set the alarm, you know, get in the car, drive to the nine to five job. We're told what to do. Our time is managed from start to finish. And now we're thrown into this whole new world where we get to manage our own time. We are setting and scheduling appointments and how effective we are depends on what we take home to our children. And we have a huge opportunity for growth. I think they say that only um, that nine out of 10 small businesses close within the first five years. And uh, I think you know, it's, it truly is any one of them. I tell me if you agree, I think any one of them could probably be successful given the amount, given time, given the time to work on yourself, the time to uh, tweak and fix any systems that maybe aren't working for you and adjust. Would you agree there? Oh, absolutely. 100%. You know, you have to go with with what's happening in the world, you know, let's take this, what happened recently, you know, this past year, the pandemic and how brick and mortar businesses have to shut down. Well, yes, we had to shut down, but we can't shut down forever because we still have to pay the bills. We still have to feed our family. So what do we do? Well, we have to pivot, right? So then businesses started turning things online. Services started to try to become online. You know, um, I have friends that are uh, licensed, con um, licensed, Ooh, I can't think of the word, um, clinical licensed practitioners, that's the word, 
and they, they used to meet their clients in person, but now they had to pivot and they had to do everything online. And Zoom became the platform to do everything on. I mean, look at us right now. We're, we're here chatting with each other on Zoom and um, you're all the way in the West Coast. I'm in the Midwest. We would have never met if not for this technology. And when businesses are able to do that and pivot with what's happening in the, in the market and the economy, that's how you survive. So it goes back to what you're saying. You know, you can't take some old habits and some old skills that you have. Yes, use that. Use that knowledge. Use those skills that you have. But um, tweak it and make it work for what's happening now so you can still continue to grow and be successful. And that's one of the things about being an entrepreneur is that you don't have those used to go to when you're working in corporate you have to self-train yourself and you need to be motivated to want to improve and and want to keep going absolutely so you shared um quite a bit uh it's it's time for me to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor and i know we you touched on a couple different times the self-improvement process so when we get back let's uh talk a little bit about what that process looks like what it looked like for you and uh, I know you had mentioned a coach and, and maybe some of the other things that you had done to improve. And so right now we're going to take a quick break and hear from the sponsor. Hey, people, the Transform You Media Network. If you are enjoying the Cheap Mamba Life, I want to tell you about more content that is similar to what you are receiving right now. If you are the type of person that enjoy inspiration or insightful wisdom that takes you away from the junk that they are giving to you in the mainstream, the Transform You Media Network is the place to be. You want to find more content like this over on our YouTube page, our Roku channel, or on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Apple. Simply do a Google search, type in Transform You Media Network, or go over to our main website at transformyoubroadcast.com. That's transform the letter U, broadcast.com. See what we have to offer. We will transform your life in business. One, two, all right, this is Brenda Kilhoffer. Welcome back to the show. I'm your cheap mama. And today I am visiting with mompreneur Cheryl Ann Chow. And she has been sharing with us kind of her journey into entrepreneurship that got forced maybe a little sooner than she anticipated by uh, all of the events with COVID-19 and her, her regular nine to five type of job sh shutting down. So in the last segment, Cheryl Ann talked a lot about how she had to take opportunities to improve herself and that uh, the different things that she was doing to better herself so that in turn, her business would earn more money and, and be better. So Cheryl Ann, tell us about some of the different things that you've done. I know you mentioned business coaching. What, what types of things do you do regularly to improve yourself? Yes. Yeah, so when I first started, I, I had to learn how to listen, listen really, really well by what my customer was telling me. Um, sometimes I would misunderstand things or miss, um, think or miss, oh, I can't think of the word. I think sometimes we project our own yes, beliefs onto you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I would do. You know, I would think, okay, well, this is what I like. And this is what my kids like. So therefore, um, this mother and her children should like the same thing as well, too, because my kids like that. And that was not the case. I had to spend that time to listen and to really understand what it is that their kids really like, what their kids really enjoy, so that I could make those appropriate recommendations. And in the beginning, we had training. You know, my team leader put on training once a week so that we could all get together and discuss what worked and what didn't work. So collaborating a lot with other entrepreneurs in the same industry was how I you know, started to learn and started to grow. Then I, I attended conferences when I could and listened to the speakers there. And while most of the speakers there are motivational and inspirational speakers, they kind of really resonated well with me too, because they were, as speakers, they're trying to build their business as well. They're building their business as a speaker. And so you're listening to them and you're listening to the same struggles that they're going through, that I'm going through and how they overcame that. So even if somebody's not in the same industry as you, they might 
speak something that resonates with you as well. And you can take a lesson from that as well, too. So motivational speakers listening to those. There's lots of free podcasts and YouTube videos out there right now that you can listen to. Those are great. And I like doing that because then I can listen and like wash the dishes at the same time. So I'm multitasking. (laughs) And that's more or less what I have to do as a single mom, multitask a lot. Uh, Now, multitasking isn't always very good because sometimes you can forget what you need to do when you're trying to do three or four things at once, but one or two things is generally okay. Books, books are another great resource, and sometimes people want to know, well, what book should I read? And there's so many self-help books that are out there, so many, and you can ask friends, mentors, speakers, hey, what book do you like to read? But ultimately, it's what you want, what what you want out of it. There is one, there's two books actually that I would recommend to readers. And one of them is The Business Boutique by Christy Wright. And I like how she writes that book because she does start with a why, the big why, which is what I had already. I had that foundation from the beginning because I knew why I wanted to do it and what was going to make me go. But I liked how her book was structured because there's um, workbook bits that's built into it. So you can write in it, you can put your thoughts in it. And it's really like a hands-on, do it right now kind of a book. And one of the things that she talks about, because I was able to listen to one of her speeches, is do it scared. Sometimes we're scared to do something and it makes us a little bit uncomfortable, but do it scared. I was so scared to go live. You know, when the live feature on Facebook first came out and everyone was saying, oh, this is what you need to do to become an entrepreneur. You need to go live. You need to like just be spontaneous. If you're so, I'm like, no, I can't do that. That's, that's too much for me. But I just did it. I, I was in a conference where, you know, she said, do it scared. And that was the thing that I was scared of. So I said to a teammate, I said, can you hold my camera? We're going to go live. I'm just going to say what's in my heart and we're just going to go with it. And now I do lives like it's nothing. Like I'm just, right. it's a normal thing. So do it scared. Do it scared. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're not perfect. We're humans. So that other people can relate to you and what you do. So that's one book. And the second book is Boundaries. Um, by the two authors, Townsend and Henry something. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's the only one that you can find when you Google it, Boundaries. Townsend and Henry, I want to say Henry Cloud, but I I might be wrong, so I don't want to say the authors. The reason for that is because I had to learn what it meant for me, what it meant for my friends, what it meant for my, my kids and how to establish that. Because if not, then I would get run over. You know, like everyone would be demanding things from me, pulling left and right, and my kids would want... I need this, I need that, I need this. And then you find yourself catering to everyone else and not catering to yourself. So establishing those boundaries, knowing what it is for you and what it looks like for you and your family, your friends, your your relatives, all those things, those are really healthy relationships to have. And then it also can translate to your clients too, because you know, okay, I understand that body language with that particular client. I understand what that means now. Don't want to cross that. Okay. Well, they understand my boundaries too, and what I can and cannot do and will not do. And and when you establish those relationships, then they become stronger, those boundaries that make the relationship stronger. So those are the two books that I highly recommend to people. And then, like I said, there's a whole lot of other books that on lots of different topics that you can research. So how much time, I, I love that you shared that because I, I boil those three things down to, um, you know, that that's what I, that's how I work on me. That was what I was taught as well. And, and I boil it down to the the three things read, you know, which you've shared read. And for me, I have a daily habit that I read and then listen. You talked about listening to motivational speakers, listening to podcasts, listening to your customers, but, but listening. And I love that you said the, I call it net learning, no extra time, you know, because I can, when I'm on the, when I'm washing the dishes or taking a shower in the morning, you know, that's an opportunity listening to those different audios that, and then um, you didn't call it association, but you talked about collaborating with other folks. You know, there's a, um, there's a saying that your income will only be as high as the five people that you hang around most. So if, if as a mompreneur, the only people we're hanging around with and associating with are our five-year-olds, uh, you know, that's, we, we're not going to be very successful, right? We, we have a not, we, whether it's on zoom, like you and I are doing, you know, getting out and associating with like-minded people. And that's, that's where you and I met was, you know, getting out and associating and 
finding an opportunity to meet other people that together, whether we're in business together or not, but we can support each other as moms. We can simply buy our association and sharing our wins and our victories and our learns. And I love the do it scared. Um, that that's the one thing, uh, Oh, one of my favorite books, many of my favorite books that talk about, I know Frank Fetcher, how I raised myself from failure to success in selling. And I think thinking grow rich also talk about that, you know, overcoming fear with action, you know, it takes action to overcome fear. So, uh, I love, gosh, you, you unpacked and shared so much in that, uh, who are some of your, besides those authors, who are some of your favorite, uh, speakers, motivational speakers to listen to? I listen to a little bit of Tony Robbins. I know his, some of his um, teachings are very different from, from those out there, but I like how he kind of gets you calm and then gets you pumped up. And that's more or less kind of how businesses need to be, right? You have, you have to be calm to be able to do things, but at the same time, you're pumped up because you're really excited and ready for the next best, the next biggest thing. And I listen to a lot of speakers within my own industry. So I'm in, the books and the financial and the health and wellness as well too. So I listen to different speakers in those three mm -hmm. industries because then they speak to different um, emotions and feelings in those industries that we, we can relate to and then also express them with the people that we meet. Because a lot of times when you meet somebody, they're going to want to work with you for a couple of things. One, that they like you. And two, that you sparked an emotion that triggers a need that they, they knew, they know they need to meet. And they're like, yeah, I got to get with you because you know exactly what it is that I need and you can help me solve whatever the problem is that I need, mm -hmm. that I have. And so I also recommend, you know, when you listen to speakers, you can pick, you know, different ones in other industries, but also listen within your industry because then that's going to help you grow as well too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do you, I, I love boundaries. So what kinds of boundaries? So for those moms that are uh, working from home, they're setting, they're basically doing business over Zoom, online. I know, you know, you and I've had other conversations and I'll have dogs that come in, the kids that come in. What, and you and I, the very first time we met, you talked about some of your boundaries with the type of client that you even choose to work with. So, so share with me what kind of boundaries you've set for yourself. And then do you have some sort of system for ensuring that those, you know, every, that things stay in line in alignment with those boundaries throughout the day? Yes. Great question. Great question. So first you have to know what your needs and your wants are and how you're going to make it happen. And once you, once you know what those things are, then you have to set for, let's start with family first. You got to set those ground rules. So right, for example, my kids, this room that I have, this office, this small space that I have, this is where mommy works. When mommy is in here, we have to be respectful. We have to be quiet. You can come in here, you can play in here, but when mommy's in here, we're not going to make loud noise. See, that's a totally different story. But my kids know that when I'm in here, it's because I need to work. And they have to be respectful of that. And they have to try to keep their voices down. They're kids. They're three and four. Sometimes it, they get a little loud, but that's okay. I, I'm, I'm here to correct them and remind them, hey, this is mommy's work time. So I block my calendar a lot to block it usually I try to block it around the times when they don't need me so after meals so the other thing that I do is time blocking as well I block the time where I need to be in my office and usually I frame that around after my kids have had their meals during their nap time and then also at night time when they're sleeping. Um, that would be my, my office time. And when I have to do my work to take care of my businesses, and then I have time for them too, because, you know, if you're always working and you don't get to see your kids, then that beats the whole purpose of being a stay at home mom, uh, a mompreneur working at home. Right. So I, I block time for them as well. And usually that's in the afternoons, we can go to the park in the morning when they first wake up. Uh, so we make breakfast for them. And 
little breaks. So whenever I have like a little break or a phone call finishes early, I'll come out of my office. And when I come out of my office, they know, yay, mommy's done. Let's play. <laughs> Whether it's like five minutes of tickle me or like a quick puzzle or something like that. So making time for them, they know that, hey, mom has time for me and mom has time for work. And you have to be consistent with that. Whenever you establish a boundary, you have to be consistent with that because otherwise the boundary doesn't stay. And as for boundaries with uh, particular clients, like for me, I just learned over time that I work really well with other single parents and other moms as well too. And the reason for that is because we just understand each other. We, we know the struggles and the challenges that we're going through. We know that our kids are going to be with us all the time. Like for me, my kids are with me with, for all of my business, wherever I go for business, my kids are with me. Now, if it is a place where I, I have to be respectful of that location and children are not allowed, then, you know, I would find a sitter, find a friend or a church friend that can, that can help me out. But for the most part, my kids are part of my business because that's part of my brand. I am a single mompreneur. I'm a super mom, prayer warrior, connector. <laughs> and so that's part of my brand. And my kids know that. Um, I love bringing my kids actually to, to vendor shows because other people see that my kids are enjoying books mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, my kids can do that too. So mm -hmm. that's, that's just what I do. I know when we had talked before, uh, one of the things that you and I have found, you know, found in common is that our, I mean, mine's five now, you have four and three, but they, they do basic cooking skills on their own that, you know, where, and it's, it's not a, it's not from a place of neglect, but we are raising kids. I think, you know, when mom works from home and mom sets goals and mom sets those kinds of boundaries, that our children learn the same thing. They start to learn how to set their own goals. They also learn to set boundaries and they learn how to, to go and achieve things for themselves. They become more self-sufficient. And I love that. I love, it gives me peace. It gives me joy knowing that my kids, when, when they get out and they start living their lives when they're, you know, whether it's in college, whether it's their first apartment home by themselves or whether they're, they're married and they have their own families that they know how to do, you know, not just stick something in the microwave that, yeah. you know, that, that they don't just have the ramen macaroni and cheese and hot dogs mentality that they can actually cook themselves a good, healthy meal that they can, that they can fend for themselves, that they know how to do those things. Um, and I, I don't think I would have ever been able to do that working away from the home in a nine to five job and, and teach them those kinds of skills that, you know, there's, there's things that when you're home and they're home that they need to do that, they can do for themselves and it's okay. Right. <laughs> absolutely. You know, it's okay to raise independent children at a young age. It's absolutely okay. And yeah. here comes my daughter. I know. I see her. She's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I love, I, I love that. In fact, I think one of my first podcasts I did with my 13 year old son and made him part of, he was, he was my interviewee. And part of the podcast. And I, I love what you shared about it being your brand, because um, that was when I first went into real estate, I was BK Family Homes. And, you know, yep, I would work with whoever, but uh, my brand said exactly who I was. And my brochure had pictures of my kids. And there wasn't anybody who worked with me that didn't know that, you know what, if I was, if I was at a dive meet on a Saturday afternoon, that I wasn't dropping everything and going to show a home. And I think that's, I think that's important that we, we set out those boundaries just in our brand and in everything that we do. And I love that you, that you share that. So what would you, what would the first piece of advice that you would give to someone who let's just say a mom was sitting here and said, Hey man, Sherilyn, you really inspired me. I've been doing this side hustle here and I really want to make it permanent. I want to make it my, my, my one thing. Uh, what's next? What would you, what advice would you give that mom sitting in front of you and how would you encourage her? Be 
Great question, Brenda. Yes. Yeah, so I would tell that mom, you know, do it scared, like we talked about before. And if that's really something that you want, just go for it. And if you want a second opinion and you want somebody to check to check your work, then talk to a business coach because that's what I did. I was like, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing, but I want to make sure that what I'm doing is right and it's going to work. Because business coaches have worked with so many people in so many industries and they've seen they've probably seen it all, you know, they've probably seen a little bit of everything that you have had a fear on and they can give you a third party outsider advice, advice and insight that you might not have seen before. So if that's, if that's something that you're really passionate about, then don't let it, don't, don't let anything else hold you back. Don't let your doubts, don't let your fears hold you back because if you believe in it, it's going to work out. I believed in what I was, what I wanted to do. I believed in the three industries that I wanted to do and, and I've made it work. It's been a year now and we're, we still got the same roof over our head. We, our tummies are filled, um, <laughs> bills are still paid. So, Hey, if I can do it, you can do it too. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was awesome. So how does somebody get in touch with you? The great way would be to find me on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, in Facebook, I'm just under Cheryl Lynn, and on LinkedIn, I'm Cheryl Lynn Chow. That would be the best way to find me. And um, yeah, we can just tap in. Awesome. Cheryl Lynn, thank you so much for being a part of the show today. I know that you are going to speak to the hearts of future mompreneurs and mom and current mompreneurs um, in a way no one else can. And I appreciate you being here and sharing your gifts and your advice and your experiences with other moms at home who, you know, maybe, maybe are not having the best of days today. And I'm sure that you lifted them up and supported them. So I appreciate you and I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for joining us on the Cheap Mama Life podcast. Yes. Thank you, Brenda, for having me. I appreciate it. And I enjoyed our conversation. All right. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed that episode of the Cheap Mama Life podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review right now if you haven't already. And hit that share button. Until next time. <laughs>